if I go up top and I want to see this by customer. So now we could run this, not there, by customer, customer, customer. There it is. Boom. Okay, so there we have it. Now it's broken out by customer. Now let's pull that in to the, uh, the income line item and we'll see the income related to that customer as well. And notice it has the customer, and this is the sub customer, and then the total for the customers adding up all the totals, which we'll see more when we add data. So I'm gonna go back to the tab to the left, and let's say that we're going to, let's hit the plus button up top and say we're gonna make an invoice now, and we will make it for uh, customer number 400, and that's the sub customer. I can pull in the billable item now, Let's do it. Let's pull it in. Let's do it. And then now we've got, let's keep it on the same date. We'll keep the same date here. And so now it's pulling in. Now, if I don't add any anything else other than what it's put in here, I could put a description in for what it was put in. So like materials that pulled in, then it's just going to, it's just going to pull into an account that's kind of made up by QuickBooks because I'm not using a an item, which is the thing that usually drives which account it's gonna be going to. Uh, so let's go ahead and just record it and see what it does, see what happens. So this is going to then increase the accounts receivable. If I go to the balance sheet, the balance sheet accounts receivable is breaking out by customer. And then if I go to the tab to the right and run this one, now we've got the 2000 billable and the supplies. It didn't mark it up by that 30%. So for some reason that the, the thing didn't take to mark up by the 30%, let's do it again. And on the next one, we'll mark it up by 30%. I just turned it on again, but here we've got the income that pulled in. Notice that it pulled into the billable uh, expense income. And then, which is an income account that it kind of made up for the billable expense, we couldn't really switch it because we use that billable thing instead of using instead of using the the items. So let's do it again. This time, let's try to use an item with it and let's apply something to 410 this time. So I'm gonna say uh, new, not new, what am I doing? Plus button up top and let's make another expense form. And this one, we're gonna make it for 410 and let's make this one as of one five let's say and we're gonna say then down here instead of using the category let's use the item so i'm gonna use an item now and this is a standard technique for using items if you're going to try to pull the expense in a job cost type of system over to the invoice so that we have more control on which account's going to be hit on the income side when we get to the invoice so let's hit the drop down and i'm going to say new item and this time let's make it a, a non inventory because I'm not going to be tracking the inventory with, with it. Let's call it materials. And so I'm going to say copy that. It's going to be materials down here. I'm not going to add a class or anything. I'll keep it in the services, even though it probably should be going into the product. We'll put it to product. That's where I pr should have put the last one. And then I'm going to have both of these checked off so that when it, if when I pull it onto the income statement, it's going to pull in to the income account of sales of product. That's the thing that's a little bit different here. And then down here, when we purchase it, I'm not going to put it into purchases. I'm going to put it into cost of supplies and labor, cost of goods sold. We're just going to expense it as we go. All right, so we're going to save it. And then let's put this in there for, let's say, uh, 500 this time and then I'll make it billable and it should mark it up so notice now it's marking it up like we wanted it to do last time but I didn't really check it too too much it's still I'm um, so anyways this six <laughs> that's what's gonna pull into the invoice when we pull it into the invoice obviously we could have multiple line items on on one of these items too so if I say add another one let's say it's gonna be a non inventory sir uh, labor labor and description description same concept the income account i'm going to put it to the sale of products when i pull it over to the invoice and then down here i can put this to cost of goods sold labor and we'll save it and let's say this one was 400 
We'll make it billable as well, marking it up 30% when we pull it on over into the, uh, the invoice. And by the way, this shouldn't be going to customer up top. This should be going to a vendor. <laughs> and that's going to delete the whole thing. I'm going to save it. It should be going to a vendor. And then down here, it's still good. I'm going to say, okay, so I've recreated it. Materials and labor. And then I'm going to make it go to the project, which I think we're looking at 410 now is the one we want it to be going to. So that's going to be pulling over when I make the invoice. Okay, what's this going to do? Decrease cash. Other side goes to the expense account driven by the items this time to the cost of goods sold ones and it'll be billable so when I make an invoice for customer project or or sub customer for 10 it'll pull over so let's say save and close tab to the right and run it running and so so then uh, it's in not specified over here again if I go to the tab to the right and run this one now we've got the expenses that are pulling in to these same accounts it looks the similar to what we did over here even though we did items with this one the items will differ when i pull it now into the to the income account because instead of just making this billable expense income quickbooks will now put it into the income account that we prescribed by the item so if i go back to the first tab and just do that plus button invoice and then we're going to say this time we want to do uh 410 and we'll pull in both of these items we could just add all of them and so that looks good that looks good so now it's got the materials and it's got the markup that it pulled in and it's also got the product or the item so the item is what's going to drive it to the income account that we wanted it to be going to uh, so then, so that looks good. So it's going to increase accounts receivable. The other side is going to be going to the uh, income account to the accounts that we prescribed it to be going to, and it'll be broken out by customer, job, or sub customer. So let's save it and close it. Tab to the right and run it. Now this one, uh, I think, breaks out the accounts receivable. So now the accounts receivable are breaking out, whereas the cash wasn't. And I believe that's because when you look at the form for the invoice, we're assigning it to a customer on the invoice, whereas the, the checking account, because we're not assigning the, the customer to the full transaction, uh, isn't, we're assigning it per line item.